Video 8 is a com combined 6 minute version of videos 6 and 7, the Hubble constant, dark matter and dark energy solved with one new law. This short video extracts the essence of videos 6 and 7, but if you want to question any aspect of my thinking, then please go to the long and detailed versions of this video. The creators of the two Hubble constants make assumptions and do calculations which rely on the existence of entities which have not yet been physically proven to exist in the real universe. The Planck CMB Hubble constant incorporates both dark matter and dark energy in its calculations. The Hubble constant that uses type 1a supernova for some of its calculations assumes that dark energy pumps up the spaces between stars and galaxies, making it appear as if stars and galaxies are accelerating away from one another. Dark matter was created by mathematicians without any regard for whether or not it can exist in the physical universe. This has got to be the biggest scientific mistake of the 20th century, followed closely at the end of the century by dark energy. And now, after 40 years, and hundreds of millions of dollars spent on research, there is still no proof of their physical existence. I will tell you why in a little while. Across the globe, there is an increasing awareness that something must be wrong with what Newton and Einstein tell us about how the universe works. Either we come up with modifications to Newton's laws in order to account for the numerous anomalies or come up with new science? Well, there is a solution. This solution adds another law to Newton's laws. This new law does not interfere with Newton's laws, but is an additional law, and which does require some new science, and it has a dramatic effect on how the universe works, and it also gets rid of the illusions of dark matter and dark energy at a stroke. And if you embrace this new law, don't expect cosmology or the universe to be the same again, because everything will change forever. This is the law. The law of universal propulsion states that because matter has the fundamental property of propulsion, which is directly proportional to its mass, just like gravity is, as bodies of matter recede away from other bodies of matter, acceleration will increase by the square of the distance between them, according to the inverse square law. So in my universe, matter has both the property of gravitational attraction and of propulsion. That is why the universe goes around as it does and expands as it does. And now to test the law. Test number one dark energy. What is happening? If we are in a gravity propulsion universe and we apply the law of universal propulsion, as galaxies recede away from one another, we get matter accelerating by the square of the distance between all other matter. All of the propulsive energy in the universe is invested in matter and not in the space between matter. The reason for this is the same reason that the amount of gravitational energy is fixed as both are a fundamental property of matter. In the gravity propulsion universe, matter, being self-propelled, is accelerating itself exponentially into the existing void with the help of momentum from the Big Bang. So dark energy is redundant. Test number two, dark matter. You seek it here, you seek it there, you seek it everywhere. Is it big? Is it small? Is it so small that it doesn't exist at all? Forty years down the line and you're still looking ever more desperately for your dark matter particle because you couldn't find any star-sized objects by the billions surrounding our galaxy. And so where to next? The answer is quite simple. It is called the gravity propulsion universe. If you put our galaxy, globular clusters, 
or anything else in the gravity propulsion universe and apply the universal law of propulsion of matter, everything behaves as it should and stars are flying at the velocities that they should be flying at, not just drifting through the void by momentum only. And dark matter has been relegated back into the black hole, which is where it always was. So now dark matter is also redundant. Test number three, the beginning of the universe. The third test of this new law is a discussion about the Planck CMB Hubble constant and how the universal law of propulsion relates to it. If the Planck CMB Hubble constant is right, then the universe has expanded at a slower rate than the Hubble type 1a supernova constant says it has, because the Planck model is the lower of the two. The Planck CMB Hubble constant is flawed because it assumes that the universe is expanding at a fixed rate. If you accept that matter has the fundamental property of propulsion, then over time, as matter concentrates into ever larger masses and collections of masses, so will the force of gravity of those masses increase, and so also will the force of propulsion of matter increase progressively. From this, you must conclude that as propulsive force increases, so does the rate of acceleration into the void increase. Up to 9 billion years ago, into the age of the universe, when the propulsion era begins, the force of propulsion of matter increased progressively. After this, with the help of momentum from the Big Bang, runaway exponential acceleration into the void begins. Now, in the light of this, the Planck CMB Hubble constant must be reformulated to take account of the fact that the rate of acceleration of matter into the void increased progressively over time. What they do with non-existent dark matter is another question for them to consider. Thank you for watching my eighth video and if you need to know more please go to videos 6 and 7 and please give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed my presentation or have been inspired by my efforts to encourage the mainstream scientific community to abandon the dead-end science of dark matter and dark energy.